In 2018, Domino's became the largest pizza chain by revenue in the world, overtaking Pizza Hut, which was holding the title for decades. Today, Domino's has over 18,057 outlets, which are around 250 more outlets than Pizza Hut, which has 17,809. Once the failing pizza chain, Domino's turnaround came this decade and its stocks outperformed even tech stocks like Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook. If you would have invested $1,000 in 2011, you would have made around $25,000 in 2021. Domino's was founded by Tom Monahan, whose father died when he was just four. His mother struggled to put food on the table throughout his childhood. Learn to know how a poor guy who even struggled to get food on his table was able to create one of the largest food chains in the world. Watch the video. Tom Monahan, the founder of largest pizza chain Domino's. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. In 1937, Tom Monahan was born in Ann Arbor, Michigan. His parents were Francis Monahan and Anna Monahan. His parents later had another son, Jim. Tom spent his early years in a farmhouse, his father a truck driver built on a parcel of land he bought from his grandmother. They lived a modest life, living off fetched water from a nearby stream until his parents could afford a pump. Sadly, in 1941, his father died of peritonitis. Tom was four years old at the time. Afterward, his mother struggled to take care of Tom and his brother Jim. She eventually gave them to St. Joseph Home for Boys, which was run by the Catholic Church. It was there that Tom developed his Christian faith and his love for the Catholic Church. At the home, Tom and his brother followed a strict schedule that included classroom study, daily mass and prayer, and cleaning. Tom was particularly influenced by one nun, Sister Mary Berarda, who was kind and devout in her faith. In one of her classes, Tom announced he would become an architect, ball player, or priest. Sister Berarda told him he could do it, but asked him to promise her that whatever his ambitions led him, he would be good. In 1949, after six years, Tom's mother returned to take back her boys. She had graduated from nursing school and got a job in Traverse City near Lake Michigan. Tom was 12 years at the time, but had a strong adolescent spirit. He helped in the house by doing some farming and fishing, but the boys argued with their mother a lot. She would send them to foster care, during which Tom would enroll at St. Francis High School. Anne eventually sent Tom to a juvenile detention home. He spent some months at the home before his father's sister rescued him and took him to Ann Arbor. Tom graduated from St. Thomas High School. After high school, Tom wanted to enroll at Ferris State College to study architecture, but he had no money. He tried to find work to pay for college but was unsuccessful. One day, he saw a poster advertising paid college tuition for people who joined the army. He decided to enlist. He filled out some paperwork, but later found out he had mistakenly enlisted for the U.S. Marine Corps. In 1956, Tom joined the U.S. Marine Corps and served dutifully until his honorable discharge in 1959. He had saved up $2,000 during his time in service, but naively lost all of it to an oil well scheme. Tom enrolled at the University of Michigan in 1960 with a plan to study architecture, but again, had no money. He explained his predicament to his brother who informed him that a pizza store in Ypsilanti, Michigan was on sale for cheap. Because Jim had a background in a pizzeria, they could buy the store and run it, earning Tom money for college. Tom agreed. The two brothers put up $900 for the store called Dominic's and took over operations. Sadly, it was not an early success. The store was losing money, so it could not give Tom money to attend university. He decided if he could not be an architect, he would be a successful businessman. Jim was not willing to leave his job as a postman to meet the business's needs, so he sold his share of the business for the Volkswagen Beetle the brothers used to deliver pizzas. Now fully in charge, Monahan applied his obsessive nature to the business. He started working 18-hour days at the store, often sleeping inside. He never sat down when he entered the store, so standing shifts became the norm for all employees. Because his store was small and could not do large sit-ins, he hired local unemployed factory workers to perform deliveries. He cut down the store's offerings to focus on the pizza and made changes to its quality, choosing to only use the freshest dough, highest quality toppings, and premium cheese. 
He visited dozens of rival pizzerias and borrowed the ideas that worked, and also emphasized to his staff the need to fulfill orders as fast as possible. After the changes, the store began to pick up and was soon doing well. It became so busy that Monaghan began hiring full-time employees. In 1962, Monaghan opened a second store in Ypsilanti. In 1964, he bought the leading pizzeria in Ann Arbor, Pizza from the Prop. Monaghan was always looking for ways to make his pizza better. He recognized early that he needed new packaging to deliver more pizzas and get them to customers while still hot. He pressed his manufacturers for an insulated box that could keep pizzas warm, but also withstand the weight of several boxes stacked on top without sagging. This led to him pioneering the insulated pizza box, now an industry standard. He later innovated the dough tray, the pizza screen, and the conveyor oven. In 1965, Monaghan wanted to expand, but the original owner of the first store prohibited him from using Dominic's brand. An employee suggested Domino's and he liked it. He renamed the business Domino's Pizza Inc. in 1965. The company's logo had three dots representing the first three stores. In 1967, Monaghan sold his first franchise. Funded by debt, he continued opening franchises all through the late 1960s. By 1970, he was $1.5 million in debt and was close to bankruptcy. He gave operations to a local businessman, Kevin Hevlin, who restructured the business. Later in 1970, Monaghan regained control of the business and continued expanding. By 1972, he had 54 stores operating. Monaghan followed a unique franchising system requiring new franchisees to have successfully operated an existing store for a year. This gave store supervisors a chance to become franchisees while also giving them experience in running a pizzeria. He also doubled down on quick delivery times, marketing to customers that Domino's would deliver pizzas in 30 minutes or else they were free. In 1973, Monaghan had 76 stores spread across 13 states. By 1978, he had 200 stores in the United States. In 1983, Domino's opened its first store internationally in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. It later opened its first store outside North America in Queensland, Australia. Also in 1983, Monaghan bought the Detroit Tigers a baseball team. A year later, the team won its first World Series in over a decade. Through the 1980s, Domino's opened about three new stores daily. It opened its first stores in Japan and the United Kingdom in 1985. By 1989, it had 5,000 stores globally. In 1992, Monaghan sold the Detroit Tigers to the owners of Little Caesars Pizza, Mike Illich. In 1993, Domino's opened in Haiti and the Dominican Republic. In 1995, Domino's opened its 1,000th international store, giving it a presence in 40 countries, including Eastern Europe and Africa. By 1997, Domino's had 1,500 international stores, adding about seven stores per day. In 1998, Monaghan sold over 90% of his shares in Domino's Pizza to investment firm Bain Capital for $1 billion. He left the daily operations of the company a year later, announcing he would dedicate his remaining years to church-related philanthropy and activism. In 2011, he founded Gyrene Burger, but the burger chain was not successful. In 1983, Monaghan founded the Mater Christi Foundation. It later changed its name to the Ave Maria Foundation. It focuses on Catholic education, community projects, charities, and media. His foundation funded the establishment of the Spiritus Sanctus Academies. These are elementary schools operated by the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. The foundation also founded Ave Maria Law School, which was first located in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but was relocated to Collier County, Florida, where Monaghan had built Ave Maria University. He built Ave Maria University, a Catholic university, in partnership with Baron Collier, a development company. Monaghan also funded Ave Maria Radio, a Catholic radio station, and the Thomas More Law Center, which promotes Christian social values. He has supported the Vatican in installing digital systems, funded Catholic missions in Honduras, and donated millions toward relief efforts in Latin America. 
In 1987, Monaghan founded Legatus International, an organization of Catholic business and political leaders. The goal of organization is to inspire the leaders to spread the faith and espouse Catholic virtues in their way of life. Legatus now has 25 chapters in the United States and over 5,000 members. Monaghan has received honorary degrees from 13 universities in the United States and is an honorary fellow of Magdalene College by the University of Cambridge. Monaghan remains active on the boards of Ave Maria University and the Ave Maria Foundation. Tom Monaghan had a tough life. He was born in a poor family of farmers. His father died when he was four. But still, his tough upbringing did not stop him from creating the biggest pizza chain in the world. He always wanted to become rich. To get rich, he always worked very hard. He tried many innovations, like getting pizza in 30 minutes concept was first introduced by Tom Monaghan. Such innovations made him rich and he was able to create the largest pizza chain in the world. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.